Hello gladiators, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Kim. Um, uh, I make videos. <laughs> Today's video is going to be five tips for back to school. Um, I start school on Monday, so I am implementing these tips myself. So if you can think of anything else that could help a student, leave it in the comment box below. Um, go ahead and give this video a big ol' like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you're notified every time that I post a video. I am so sorry, you guys. I feel like my camera angle is going to change like 50 bajillion times because it just keeps... Bleh. I'm literally filming on pillows because the lighting is best this way and I'm sitting on my bed. Anyways, I have my laptop here, so if you see me looking down, it's because I am looking at um, what I wrote. So, Okay, so the first tip I have for back to school or just school in general, um, this is pretty much focusing on like college, but it could be applied to like high school or whatever, depending on what you're doing, is to get a planner, you guys. A planner will save your life. I wish I had the one I just got here so I could show it to you. I got it from Walmart. It was like $7, I think. You can find them literally for cheaper. It was just like the kind that I wanted. Um, get a planner or something that you can write down your classes in, write down what you need to do. It only it not only keeps you organized with school, but also with your life. So like if you have different sports and things, you can plan everything out in the planner and you have a set place. My planner literally last semester or just last year going back to school really saved my butt and it's just so nice because you can just like check off what you need to do you know what you need to do each day you know when assignments are due it has the calendar view and then it has each week and something that's going to be able to keep you organized and um, on track so that you don't miss important due dates and things like that the next um tip i have is to create a separate uh workspace basically um a lot of people they're living in apartments uh when you go to college you're living in your dorm so your your bed is in your room and it's so easy to want to like do your work and stuff in bed and lay around and lounge but then you'll start associating your bed with work and then it will mess up your your rest pretty much so um if you can create kind of like a separate area within the room where you know i do my work here at this desk or i do my work on the floor um and not in your bed i think that's a really good idea kind of create a separate area so that your brain can like shut off like this is work mode and this is bed mode. Tip three that goes with kind of that is to give yourself breaks. So when you're working, make sure to take breaks. Like when you're studying and things, I know it's really easy to like pull all nighters and to like just keep going, going, going. But for me, it doesn't really work that well. Um, first of all, let me just tell you, I've never pulled an all nighter because if one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some sleep. I don't care if um, I have a big old test coming up or whatever. I'm gonna get my sleep, okay? Because I promise you, even if I don't look at the material, if I get sleep, I will do a lot better than if I stayed up all night. So <laughs> rest is key here, people, okay? I would say to make sure that you, when you're studying, is to um, do like 20 minutes on, 10 minutes off. Or maybe you study for an hour and then you give yourself 30 minutes to, you know, look at your phone or do anything. But keep yourself distraction free when you're in work mode. And then when it's time for you to take your break, then that's when you can scroll social media, respond to text messages uh you know doodle in your notebook all of that but during that time where it's like 20 minutes that's like go time like i'm working on my homework getting it done and i promise you'll get so much more done that way than just like not taking breaks and like just sitting there procrastinating um if you are procrastinated this really does help um at least in my opinion tip number four is to get rest guys you need rest your body needs rest i know people are like college is so stressful you can't sleep or whatever but rest is so important you cannot function without sleep so i that's why i say get the planner because you can literally plan like what you're gonna do that day and that way when it's time for bed like you're like 
I can go to sleep knowing I accomplished everything on my list. And if I didn't, then I can move to the next day. It just flows so much better. So number four is literally go to sleep, go to bed, um, which leads into number five, because if you're not resting and you're not sleeping, then that's affecting your mental health. And so my fifth tip is to focus on your mental health. Most uh, college campuses have free counseling um, that you can do like per semester. Um, look into free counseling, therapy, whatever you need to do to make sure you're sane. Uh, college is crazy, okay? You have tests and deadlines and papers and you're, everything's so crazy, okay? Like, trust me, I get it. I'm a single mom going to college full-time and working. Like, I get it. It's stressful. So your mental health is a priority and you need to take care of it. And so whatever that looks like for you, just make sure that you're doing that and you're taking time to do that. Have your self-care days. Have those days where you just don't do anything or um, just create time for you to focus on yourself. Um, making sure that you're using the tools that are available to you to help you with your mental health is so so important which leads me into tip number six which is to talk to your teachers your teachers cannot help you if they don't know you <sighs> i apologize if you can hear my son in the back he's talking to my dad on facetime anyways <laughs> you have to talk to your teachers i always make it a point uh, it doesn't matter how big the class is, if there's 100 kids in the class, whatever, I 100, 200 kids in the class, I always make sure my professor knows my face and knows my name because I have a child. So that's literally my main reason um, is in case I skip class because I need to take him to a doctor. Or what if I get sick and, you know, I need to be um, out or whatever, just whatever it is, I like my professor to put to be able to put a face to a name and that's going to make you stand out because it shows that one that you took the time to actually come and talk to your teacher just to get to know them get to know their name um and then when you need help in class or you're missing class for something they're probably more likely to help you because they're like oh yeah i remember this girl i remember this boy like they can put that face to the name and they are more likely to, you know, help you any way they can or um, maybe make accommodations for you, depending on their policy, whatever. Even if you don't need their help all semester, like the class is a breeze, whatever, at least they know you and they know your face. Um, and even if they don't like remember your face, but they know your name. And so when it comes to grading and things like that, not saying that like your teacher's biased, but like if you don't put in the work, if you don't like make that connection, there's nothing for them to base off of. You know, when your grades start slipping, your professor might be more inclined for them to check up in on you. If they're like, hey, you know, you're usually pretty good about getting things turned in. Is there something going on? If you show that you're trying, they're willing to work with you talk to your professors go to their office hours um if you need help with tutoring or anything they have those sources available use them and i'm just saying all that to say like your professors are there for you You're when you make that personal connection with their professors they are able to help you and these are the people that when you go to grad school if you are going to grad school or whatever you're able to have those connections and then they're able to write you recommendation letters or they're able to point you you know in the right direction that leads into tip number i think it's number seven i think we're on tip number seven and then this is the last tip which is to ask questions guys you are there to learn i know you don't want to be that one kid that like okay don't ask questions that the teacher already answered like if you need more help after class like go after class don't be holding everybody else up but like ask questions ask your professors when you're in your major like what does it look like to um to work in this field what are my options in this field like what can i practically do what's it gonna look like ask the questions they are there for you they are literally there to guide you you don't just have to go to your um 
I think it's like, what is it, your uh, your advisor? You don't just have to go to your advisor. You can ask your professors and you can um, go to the dean, like set up meetings, network. These are the people that are gonna be writing your recommendation letters for grad school and things like that. So again, making that personal connection they're more likely they're gonna write you a better recommendation letter because they have more to base it off of maybe your grades aren't the best but they're able to be like hey but she's so passionate about this she's so this she's so that like they're able to base it off more they're able to say more than like oh yeah their grades look great like it's not gonna be a generic basic letter it's gonna have more of your personality and their, your relationship with that professor anyways guys those were my seven tips um for going back to school um i hope this video was helpful to you um i know like i said these are things that i actually do these are things that help me and that have helped me be successful and i don't like want to toot my own horn but like it's been working so far so good also, I think it's all just by the grace of God. I just literally pray every day and hope for the best. Um, but I also plan. So plan and pray and hope for the best. Um, anyways, I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful semester. We can get through this together. Um, <laughs> we can do it. I am so excited to see what this new school year brings and everything. So yeah i'll keep you guys updated maybe i'll vlog some days when i go to class or whatever i don't know we'll see and leave your tips below also leave some encouragement for the freshmen that are coming in to college school is not for everybody find the path that works the best for you whether that's a trade whether that's working for yourself and whatever it is like just make sure it makes you happy and that you're interested in it because it's what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life um and if you aren't in school and you want to go back to school, you're never too old to go back to school. I'm 25 and I'm still, I'm still an undergrad. So <laughs> like literally um, age is nothing but a number. So that's all I have for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed talking with you. I should do more sit down videos where I'm just like chit chatting, you know, but anyways um remember to let your light shine and to gladiate gracefully and i will catch you guys in my next video Bye. Bye.